Cheater, how did you slow it down that much? Lovelace, that's how. <laughs> Frame rates I never thought would be possible to record are now easily recordable with higher quality than ever. RTX 4000 series is honestly just mind blowing to the extent that I had to spend three extra days confirming my results because I didn't actually believe them. After the hell that was Techtober ended and and bled in over to November because it didn't actually end, it was timely, f time to finally sit down and play my favorite game, Splitgate, along with the new Halo update. But I wanted to record clips as I went, it's what I always do, but playing on the new RTX 4080, I didn't want to just stick with normal shadow play, I wanted to see if OBS with its replay buffer would let me push recordings up to 444 chroma subsampling, where quality is lossless and upscaling is super clean. And it did. 1440p 60 444 HEVC replay buffer went off without a hitch. Hmm. Gameplay looks fantastic, but even on my RTX 3090, this wasn't really at all doable. Like, at all. I kept waiting for something to go wrong, but it never did. Got lots of cool clips this way. Well, that was already a major upgrade. Can we go further? I mean... What if I what if I want to slow it down? Lots of streamers are getting clips for replays, so having your replay be 120 FPS could be really neat for slowing down sick clips. Surely this will cause some issues, right? Oh, it just doesn't care. Okay then, game is still running at a mostly locked 360 FPS. Recording's going fine. All right, 4080, you think you're cool? You think you're awesome? Then we're upscaling right in OBS. Set OBS canvas scaled to 3840 by 2160, scaling to by cubic. Now the GPU has to scale the footage and encode 4K video at 120 FPS in 444, when my 3090 couldn't even do 60 FPS 4K gameplay in 444. My God. This is genuinely the greatest thing I've ever seen. And I don't just mean split game. All right, now I'm mad. 360 FPS. Let's record every frame of the game. Okay, yeah, nope, that one didn't work. Well, that's silly to do 444 at 4K anyway, since I'm already upscaling in OBS. So what if we dropped it to 1080p, 360 FPS at 444? Is the limitation frame rate or resolution? Yep, 360 FPS, 444, 1080p, works fine. Wow. All right, well now I just want slow-mo, but at higher resolution. Can we do native 360 FPS at 1440p back in NV12? Is that doable? Yes. Yes, it is. You can now officially record every frame from most games without issue at native resolution. That's freaking incredible. So let's keep pushing it. We don't need to record in 444 if we're upscaling in OBS as it can already do so losslessly. So let's go back to 4K, NV12, but 240 FPS. And set it to P1 or P2 so we can use the dual HEVC encoders on Lovelace. Tied the leader. Lost the lead. Tied the leader.
Let's go! Hell yeah! Okay, so tell me. 360 hertz? Hmm, not quite. Even with the dual encoders, that might be a little too much, but we haven't tried AV1 yet. Shall we? Let's go! This is not a game with DLSS3 frame generation or even AI upscaling built in. These are all real frames. My final step of the quest is to find out what the frame rate limit is, as it seems like there isn't any, but maybe there is. Splitgate tops out at 360 hertz, so it's time to fire up Halo MCC. Ah uh, yes, there's the 500 to 1000 FPS I crave. It looks like there might be a hardware limitation or throughput bottleneck of 375 FPS recording, at least at 4K and those kinds of resolutions. I can get past the 360 FPS cap that I was running into with HEVC by using the AV1 encoders, but I still hit a wall at 375 FPS at 4K. 380 starts encoder lagging, as does anything higher. At 1080p, however, I hit a limit of about 550-ish FPS in HEVC, and then somewhere in the ballpark of 700-ish FPS in AV1, which is wild. But it's worth noting that at these higher frame rates, things start to kind of break a little bit. At 4K above 240 FPS, the replay buffer just kind of quit on me. The buffer would run, and it was encoding, but it just kind of stopped saving files somehow. But normal straightforward recording worked fine. At 1080p, trying to push 500 plus FPS, it would encode video, but again had trouble actually stopping the encoder to write files even with normal recording modes. Weird stuff, but in the realm of what most normal people, even on the very high end, would want to do, it's fine. This hardware is absolutely insane. I do not have words for these results. Just to be certain, I went back to the RTX 3090 from last generation, and even just in NV12, which was the easier mode to record because it's color compressed, 240 FPS and higher at 4K is worse than a PowerPoint presentation. 120 FPS is still too stuttery to look good even playing back at 60 FPS, and then 120 and 240 FPS at 1440p kind of work, but again, only in NV12, and there's a lot of bursts of encoding lag and stutters as a result. I, uh, I might be able to capture a couple rad moments like the end of this match here, uh, but most of the video feed isn't great. But, of course, RTX 3000 doesn't have dual encoders, nor AV1 encoding, so it's losing most of the advantages that RTX 4000 has in its favor here. By the way, my rad blank VHS merch uh, is going away as after Cyber Monday. I told you it'd be limited run, we extended it a little longer than intended, and now this is it. Uh, this upcoming weekend will be it. We have a 20% off sale running from Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday, and then it's gone for good. Eposfox.gg slash merch, don't miss it. While the situations that I have tested here might seem ridiculous, I honestly believe that these capabilities are going to unlock a world of potential for creatives and for broadcast professionals once they figure out how to apply it, and once the GPUs come down in price and become more accessible, of course, all of that. For me personally, it means that I'm capturing basically completely lossless gameplay at all times, or just going ahead and upscaling all gameplay to 4K or 8K in OBS and recording in AV1 to save on file sizes. It means capturing crazy slick slow-mo shots for streams and montages like I just posted on Lost Saves, linked below. It means capturing all of my screen captures in either 444 lossless for scaling up and editing so that my tutorials are clearer than ever, or just natively upscaling it directly to 8K in OBS to make my life easier in editing. Outside of my work, streamers will have even more headroom for replay buffers while streaming, multi-streaming capabilities, and so on. It means for esports and physical sports, being able to pair this with something like Exceldro's Instant Replay OBS plugin to get super high frame rate slow-mo clips recorded of normal broadcasts for instantly calling up and playing in slow motion, just like this. It means recording more sources at once in higher quality. For example, that trick I showed you of recording your desktop or gameplay side by side with your webcam, you can now do that in full fat lossless 4K60 for each side, or just four different things at once, which you couldn't do before. It's freaking magical. But there is a limitation here still. 
in encode sessions. A year or so ago, I reported that NVIDIA silently upped the available encode sessions, which are how many encodes you can do at once. It's a driver limitation. They upped it in the driver to three, which was great, but still not enough. You'd think the dual encoders would mean that it could just be doubled. It could be, especially when you consider all of the different multi-streams that people are doing now. Different encodes for Twitch and YouTube, a whole separate canvas and encode for TikTok and other vertical mobile platforms, plus local recordings in high quality or source recordings of individual elements, which would be multiple. We need more sessions, NVIDIA. Now is the time. I also wanted to briefly touch on performance. There is a lot of factors that go into game impact from streaming while you're playing things, including all of the other sources that you use whenever you're streaming, your overlays, your webcams, whatever, which we can cover in future videos. But using Shadow of the Tomb Raider's benchmark, which is currently running the final result with the RTX 4080, uh, the normal game benchmark, I'm just using averages here, this is all I had time for. The average FPS was 225. Using HEVC, 1440p60 dropped it down to 206, so that's about a 20 FPS drop, which is not insignificant. Using, or at 4K 120, it dropped it all the way down to 175, so that's a 50 FPS drop. But that's still over most monitors, it was still stable and fluid as far as I felt, and no encoding lag or anything like that, which is huge. Using the AV1 encoder, we got pretty much the exact same results. Uh, 1440p 60 dropped it down to 204, but that's negligible difference between 206 and 204. And then 4K 120 dropped it down to 175 as well. On the RTX 3090, the normal game benchmark ran at 175. Obviously, we don't have the AV1 encoder to test, but we do have HEVC. So 1440p HEVC is still running right now. 4K 120 with major ink major lag, like about halfway through the benchmark, it just could not keep up with encoding and just turned into a slideshow. It dropped down to 148. That sounds like a significantly higher frame rate while recording, but because it was the encoder was lagging, it wasn't actually doing as much work. And thus, yeah. Now, obviously, the encoder is only part of the issue here. Part of the issue when running these scenes is that OBS is also compositing a whole scene on your graphics card alongside your game at 4K 120, which is pretty intense. At 1440p 60 with no encoding lag, the RTX 4 or 3090 dropped you down to 155. So it so it lost about 20 FPS, which is about the same that the 480, 4080 did. Only the 4080 can do all these other insane formats and frame rates that the 3090 just can't sustain. So this is wild. This is absolutely insane. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below, and join me on Mastodon. I'm at EposFox at glitch.lgbt. Uh, join us on Discord, discord.gg slash EposFox, and remember to be kind. Rewind. Oh, and the merch. Go buy the merch. Yeah.